Hi everyone. In this video, let's talk about olanzapine. What are the different facts that you should know before its use? Olanzapine is one of the antipsychotic, which is well known with its brand name Ziprexa. It is classified as atypical antipsychotic. That means it is a second generation antipsychotic. These are the new generation antipsychotics which have less side effects compared with old generation antipsychotics. Olanzapine is available as different doses forms. It is available as tablet, intramuscular injection, even it is available in combination with other drugs for treatment of psychosis and bipolar disorder. Many drugs can be combined with olanzapine. Among them, fluoxetine is one of the antidepressant which is combined with olanzapine to control bipolar disorder. But before taking olanzapine, you should know important facts. So in this video, we are going to see the different facts like which is better, whether tablet form or intramuscular injection, where it is used, what are the clinical indications of olanzapine, and what are the important side effects that can be observed with this olanzapine, all such facts we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see tablet versus intramuscular injection. Just we have seen that olanzapine can be given in two doses forms as an oral tablet as well as intramuscular injection. Among these two formulations, which is better? In view of patient compliance, oral tablet is preferred because of ease of administration. Even tablets are associated with low side effects profile. However, in the people with agitated conditions and they are not willing to take the medication by mouth, and in such conditions, intramuscular injection is preferred. Olanzapine, when it is given by intramuscular route, it can reduce the agitation and it can induce the calmness in the people. Similarly, intramuscular injection is also preferred in the people who are not able to swallow this medication by oral route. For people with difficulty swallowing, orally disintegrating tablets are also available. These tablets are easily dissolved in the water so that they can be prepared into a solution and taken by the mouth. However, in the people who are not able to swallow because of agitated conditions and loss of consciousness, intramuscular injection is preferred. So under emergency conditions, intramuscular injection is preferred, but this formulation may be associated with high incidence of orthostatic hypotension. So in order to minimize the orthostatic hypotension, oral tablet is preferred. In the people with agitated conditions, intramuscular injection is preferred. Second one where it is used. Olanzapine is an antipsychotic, so it can be used in the treatment of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder which is associated with hallucinations where people are having either auditory or visual hallucinations with wrong perceptions. And they may also have delusions, wrong judgments, and even thought disorders, flattening of emotional responses, all these symptoms can be observed in the people with schizophrenia. Now, olanzapine can be given to control the schizophrenia as a tablet form. It can be started at an initial dose of 5 to 10 mg given once daily. However, this olanzapine is not suitable for the children with age less than 13 years. Second clinical indication of olanzapine is in the treatment of bipolar disorder. This bipolar disorder is having the different phases. Among them, olanzapine can be used to control manic episodes which are associated with hyper excitability. Even this drug can be given to control mixed episodes where the mood swings from depression to the mania and mania to depression. So this drug can be used to control manic phase as well as mood swings in the people with bipolar disorder. Again, for this purpose, olanzapine can be given as a tablet at an initial dose of 10 to 15 mg given once daily. Third clinical indication in the treatment of agitation. Generally, agitation is associated with few of the mental disorders like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. In such people to control agitation, olanzapine can be given. Even olanzapine can be given to control agitation in other mental disorders. For this purpose, olanzapine can be given as intramuscular injection at an initial dose of 5 to 10 mg. Recently approved clinical use of olanzapine is in the treatment of chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, commonly known as CINV. Chemotherapy plays an important role in the treatment of cancer. However, it involves so many types of drugs used for long-term therapy. Many of these drugs are toxic in nature 
and they can act on the brain to stimulate CTZ chemoreceptor trigger zone. When the CTZ is stimulated, it can induce nausea and vomiting. So in such people, to control nausea and vomiting, olanzapine can be given, which can modify the neuronal response within the brain, thereby it can reduce vomiting reflex. Now let us see how it works. Olanzapine acts on the brain. Within the brain, different types of neurotransmitters are involved in the induction of psychosis. Among them, dopamine and serotonin plays an important role. Psychosis is associated with activation of D2 receptors as well as 5-HT2A receptors. Generally, psychosis having two types of symptoms, positive symptoms and negative symptoms. Even though it is not clear, but many of the positive symptoms are associated with overactivation of D2 receptors. Similarly, negative symptoms are associated with excitation of 5-HT2A receptors. Now, olanzapine can block these two types of receptors, thereby it can reduce both positive symptoms as well as negative symptoms. Effect on weight Olanzapine can increase the appetite in the people, so it can increase the food intake. As food intake increases because of long-term therapy, it can induce a weight gain. Weight gain is common with many of the antipsychotics and olanzapine produces the weight gain as a common and important side effect. Even though exact mechanism is not clear, but olanzapine can stimulate the appetite centers within the brain. In order to control this weight gain, olanzapine can be combined with another drug, Samidorphan. Samidorphan is one of the opioid antagonists just like the naltrexone. It can control activation of appetite centers, thereby it can minimize the weight gain. So on long-term therapy, Samidorphan proved to be useful to control the weight when it is combined with olanzapine. Orthostatic hypotension. Olanzapine can affect the different types of chemical mediators within the brain. Among them, norepinephrine is also important. This norepinephrine plays an important role on the blood vessels. These blood vessels are expressed with alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. When they are activated, they can produce vasoconstriction. But olanzapine can block these alpha-1 receptors, resulting in the vasodilation. Because of vasodilation, this drug can produce some dizziness and lightheadedness in the people. This is particularly called orthostatic hypotension or postural hypotension. It is a drop in the blood pressure by change in the posture due to blocking of alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. Because of vasodilation, olanzapine can produce either bradycardia or even tachycardia. Even it can produce some syncope resulting in falling and fainting sensation. Where should be avoided? Olanzapine can be used to treat the psychosis, but in the people with dementia, olanzapine should be carefully used. Particularly in the elders, memory loss is an important problem. If it is untreated, it may result in the development of psychosis. In order to treat the psychosis, olanzapine should not be given because it can induce some cerebrovascular and cardiovascular complications in such people. So in the dementia-related psychosis, olanzapine is contraindicated. Similarly, the intramuscular injection of olanzapine should be carefully given, particularly at high dose, it can induce orthostatic hypotension as well as it can produce some sedation. That's why it is contraindicated with sedatives like benzodiazepines. What are the common side effects? Olanzapine can produce various side effects like constipation, dizziness, restlessness, dry mouth, sedation and fatigue. Effect on glucose levels. Olanzapine can produce some metabolic changes in the body. It can increase the glucose levels. Even it can increase the lipid levels as well as it can increase the appetite resulting in the increased food intake. All these conditions may increase the glucose levels which is more important in the diabetic people. So elevated levels of glucose should be closely monitored with long term use of olanzapine which is more troublesome in the diabetic patients. So that's all about the different facts that you should know before using olanzapine. Hope this video is useful to you. Thanks for watching this video.